everybody and welcome to today's LEGO Technic video. Last week I presented to you a two-speed automatic gearbox that was based on a number of theoretical design considerations. And after further analysis and testing I did find a number of deficiencies that I've improved upon. So today I'll be presenting to you uh, my version 2 of this gearbox and all the improvements that I've made to it. Okay, so in general an automatic gearbox consists of two parts. Uh, part 1 is a gear selector and part 2 is a torque detector. So the job of the gear selector is to select one of a number of different gears. In my case I just had a two speed gearbox. And that gear selection depends on the output of the torque detector. So the torque detector detects the torque on the output then feeds that back, back to the gear selector to select one of a number of gears. Okay, so in the gearbox redesign I've made improvements on both the gear selector and the torque detector. So first of all I'm going to talk about the gear selector. So in the previous gear selector design it's based on the idea of having a differential that adds up one of two different paths. Uh, the first path is a one third gearing ratio and the second path is a two thirds gearing ratio. So if they, uh, both those paths are engaged then the overall output will be one third plus in this bottom path of two thirds. It gives an overall output of one. Now through this gear selector at the bottom, uh, the orange rotary catch drive and the switch, we can disengage the second path which is that two thirds and what that means is we can switch between a gearing ratio of one and taking off that two thirds and a gearing ratio of one third. Now the way I achieved the gearing ratio of two thirds was uh, by driving the input through 28 to 8, then underneath we're driving that through a, a worm gear that gives us one eighth that then drives back into this differential uh, through that uh, 20 to 28. So if we work out the overall gearing ratio uh, doing the math, so I've got it over here, we've got a 28 to 8 times a 1 to 8 times a 20 to 8 on that differential. Then we're going to multiply that by 2 because of the differential. Uh, the way the uh, differential operates is that we get a factor of 2 added, um, incorporated in there that gives us a 40 to 64 ratio which is just a little bit uh, lower than two thirds. So the overall gearing ratio in this gearbox is that one third plus a two thirds that gives us just below one or just a one third. Now I've achieved that by uh, counting number of gears not including this one to three gearing ratio on the input. I've used a total of 13 uh, separate gears to achieve this uh, overall gearbox selector. Okay, so the improved version of the gear selector looks like this. It's quite a different layout. Uh, on the left here we've got the input. Uh, the overall we've got the same idea. Uh, it's going to select between either a one third or a one gearing ratio output at the output at the top here relative to the input. And it does that by creating first of all that one to three gearing ratio down here using a 12 to 36 uh, bevel gear. Uh, the main axle then also drives that secondary path which creates the uh, roughly two thirds gearing ratio and it does that by driving the 5 to 1, that 5 to 1 then uh, drives the selector which creates a gearing ratio of 20 to 12 which is about 5 to 3, that then drives directly onto this worm gear uh, which gives us a 24 to 1 onto the differential, the differential there has got 24 teeth and that gives us the overall output. So if we just do the math of the secondary gear I'll just show you how that works. So like I said we've got that 5 to 1, we've then got a 20 to 12 which is equivalent to a 5 to 3 that's multiplied by 1 to 24 from the worm gear and then we gain a factor of 2 uh, because of the differential configuration. So that gives us an overall gearing of that secondary path of 25 to 24 which is the 5 times 5 divided by 24 times 2 thirds, that's the 2 and the 3 there. So five over, uh, 25 over 24 is pretty close to 1 so the overall gearing ratio is just above 2 thirds for that secondary path. So again uh, the secondary path selects between uh, the first and the second gear by adding on to that one third. So overall we get the one third plus the two thirds that gives a one. And then when this is disengaged we're back to the one third. Now the main improvement of this particular configuration is the number of gears that have been used to achieve this. So instead of 13 in the previous design I'm now down to nine which is a makes a big difference in the overall uh, output torque and power as I'll demonstrate in a minute. Okay, so I'm now going to see experimentally to see how much that initial design of that gear selector can pull in terms of torque. Uh, so my experimental setup is on the right here. I've got my 9 volt power supply that connects through uh, the battery box over here. Uh, and that connects through a remote control to the large power functions motor, which is connected to the first version of the gear selector. Uh, that through here winds up a piece of string and that string is connected to some luggage scales that are connected to some rubber bands. So the idea is, is that 
as this winds up, it'll pull on the string, pull on the rubber bands, and the scales will measure the amount of uh, force being generated. Okay, so let's try this experiment. We'll uh, make sure this is set to zero, and it's on, and ready to go. There we go, it's on zero. We'll now turn on the motor and see how much we can pull. There we go. Not a whole lot, it's about 375 grams. Let's unwind that. You can see and do that again, just like that. Uh, that is the second attempt. And it's pretty much the same value, 365 grams of pulling power from the gear selector version number one. Okay, so I've now connected the new and improved version of the gear selector mechanism. So like I said before, this one uses just nine gears instead of 13 like the previous version. Again, it's got the large power functions motor battery box and that's connected through to the 9 volt supply. And again, we've got the torque measuring mechanism all set up. I'll just turn that on, make sure it's on and calibrated. And let's try and see how this one goes. And look at that. It is 540 grams of pulling power. Oh, now it's 560. That is fantastic. So that's a big improvement. On the previous version, let's we'll do that again. We'll show you that running, and again we have got. Okay, that one's a little bit less, 505. So that is over a 40% improvement over the previous version. I think that's um, a great improvement. That just shows you how going from 13 down to 9 gears does make a big difference in terms of those power and torque losses, uh, and I think this is uh, a great result. Okay, so that was the new and improved gear selector. I'm now going to talk about the uh, improvements I've made in the torque detector. So the torque detector that I used in the previous design pretty much looked like this. On the left here we've got the main input that's coming from the gear selector that drives through the summing differential to the output and then along the bottom path we have got the actual torque detector uh, differential that goes through a low gearing mechanism and drives around here. Now in a previous video it's shown that it's a good idea to put a torque detector on a low rotation path so that most of the power goes through the main path and the losses are minimized. So the way this particular torque detector works is that as the input is driven on the right there you can see the output rotating and then as soon as we have some loading on the output the torque detector at the bottom will start to rotate and you can see uh, this lift arm moving and that would change the gearing on the gear selector. Okay, so what's the problem with this torque detector? Well, as it turns out, uh, it actually worked quite differently than I expected. When I hold down the output, the amount of torque required to rotate that gear selector lift arm is a lot more than I thought. And when I first designed this, I looked at this and thought, well, the 1 to 9 gearing ratio should provide a lot of torque at this point in order to rotate that axle. But as you can see, when I rotate uh, that input axle, the gearing between this and this point is actually almost 1 to 1 and that really surprised me. Okay, in order to answer that question I ended up analysing the uh, torque detector mechanism in detail and what I've drawn here is the diagram of that torque detector in a uh, mathematical form. So we've got our input over here, we've got that summing differential, we've got our output coming off the top there, at the bottom we've got the torque detector, uh, that torque detector is being driven by gearing ratio A, so in this case I had a gearing ratio of uh, one ninth for that A path and we've then got a gearing ratio of B feeding back into that summing differential in this case I've got a uh, value of B of minus one through this path here uh, and then like I said we've got the output at the top and we've got the torque detector output here at the bottom represented by this part there so if it turns out that um, of course the torque detector output generally is being held still by a rubber band trying to resist that rotation so generally speaking we've got a low load on the output, the output speed of the uh, torque detector will be zero. And if you work out when the torque detector is zero, the output uh, ratio between output and input uh, works out to be one take away AB divided by two, where A and B were those two gearing ratios. So in this case I've got A of one ninth, I've got B equal to minus one. So you get uh, an output to input ratio close to a half, so it's one take away uh, or plus one ninth, uh, all divided by two, so it's very close to being a half between input and output. Now, what actually happens when the output is being held still, which means O equals zero, then the ratio of the torque detector to input speed uh, turns out to be A take away uh, one over B over two. 
um, and with b equal to minus 1 it turns out that it's 1 ninth plus 1 over 2 um, so again that is very close to the input ratio it's about a half and it's a lot different than I expected I expect it to be uh, close to 1 ninth and that's the reason why uh, the ratio between input and output uh, of the torque detector relative input is actually very high and that makes it very hard to rotate that torque detector uh, at the input. Now the problem with these equations is they kind of contradict each other. In the, this top line here we want that AB to be as small as possible. Um, we want this path to have the least amount of power relative to the main path so there's as few as, uh, losses as possible. And for this equation here we also want A take away 1 over B to be as small as possible so we um, minimize the speed of that torque detector and therefore increasing the torque when we're driving the gear selector. Now it's okay if A is small, uh, the smaller we make A the smaller both equations become so in case of a small A we get small AB, A small we get a, a small A take away 1 over B. Now the problem is the B parameter and the smaller we make B here in fact the larger it gets in this equation because it's 1 over B so for example if we use say one third over there then this becomes three so it ends up becoming a lot higher and uh, on the other hand if we make b equals to three so we get one third there then that three ends up multiplying with that a uh, causing a problem with that so uh, the trick has been to find uh, values of a and b that gives the best compromise for each of those areas so what i ended up doing in my implementation to get a low gearing ratio is use a worm gear driving directly onto that differential that gives me a 1 to 24 gearing ratio straight away for a which uh, is a lot easier to do with a worm gear than with conventional gears which may need up to six gears to get, get the same gearing ratio now because i am driving the center of that differential it does change the equations a little bit for the torque protector mechanism so i've got an updated version of this uh, pretty much very similar if you look at the equations for output to input uh, they do change a little bit but fundamentally the the issue is the same we've got uh, in this case we've got that 2AB and here we've got a 2A plus 1 over B very similar and you've got the same problem with A and B so in this case I've ended up selecting an A of uh, 124 by using that worm gear and I ended up implementing a B of minus uh, 5 thirds uh, over here in this bevel gear uh, selection over here on the setup over here so what that means is in terms of uh, the power transfer on the secondary path we've got 1 plus 2 a b over 2 ends up uh, equaling roughly 1 plus uh, 5 over 36 over 2 which 536 is about a seventh so about one seventh of the overall gearing ratio is going through that secondary path and then for the uh, torque detector output t over i turns out it's 2a plus 1 over b and if with a equaling uh, 24th we get 2 24th uh, b is uh, minus 5 over 3 so the reciprocal of that is minus 3 fifths and then again if we simplify that we get 31 over 60 so it's approximately a half so it's actually very similar uh, to my initial uh, implementation the difference being now is that I understand why um, it is a half rather than a much lower value than I thought it's actually very hard to find good values of A and B and obviously trying to get A as small as possible I've done that with that worm gear and uh, about the best B I can choose is, is about this value um, minus 5 over 3 so in order to increase the output torque of the torque detector I've just simply added another uh, 1 to 3 gearing ratio at the bottom here in order to drive that gear selector with more torque and more power you know having to use a small chain just to bridge that gap um, so yes I'll now demonstrate how this new design works overall Okay, I've now got the gearbox set up for testing. I've connected the large power functions motor at the back. That is driving that gear selection section, uh, which is this part. And then that, through this main axle here, goes into the torque detection mechanism. We've got the torque detector in the middle there. This is that summing differential, and here we've got our output. The output is connected to my uh, torque creation mechanism. So what this allows me to do is set different levels of torque by moving across these axles and blocking these clutch gears, which will uh, rotate and generate torque. Um, now because I've got 10 of them I can set different torque levels uh, for testing. Okay let's turn it on and see what happens. So this is the gearbox operating in normal mode. Uh, it's uh, very little torque on the output. The gear selector is of course not engaged. Uh, it's using that secondary path and we'll now add one level of torque. Okay so that's the motor spinning a little bit. We can see there's a little bit of movement on the torque selector or the gear selector through the uh, torque detector, uh, we'll add another level of torque uh, we see the motor is starting to work quite hard now uh, it is trying to change gears 
uh, we'll just this look at that we're now into second gear uh, the gearing is a lot stronger uh, by disengaging that secondary path uh, we get a lot of efficiency in terms of a reduction in torque and power losses and we can now see that this gearing can take a lot more torque that's five levels of torque in fact i can probably go all the way to level 10 of torque uh, and uh, the motor is very powerful and the gearbox is working really really well if I now remove all those levels of torque uh, just see what happens it should switch back to gear 1 and of course it does, there we go uh, again gear 1 and 2 and it is going to switch, there we go Okay, so this redesign has shown that by reducing the number of gears in your uh, implementation does dramatically affect the torque output. As I've demonstrated before, we gain about 40% extra torque just from that stage one of the gearbox. And again, by understanding better the relationship between the differential and the torque detector, I've demonstrated that that can be redesigned and uh, better parameters chosen. Uh, now, unfortunately, those parameters do, like I said, do contradict each other a little bit, and that B parameter is quite tough to choose a value that is a good compromise between the two requirements. Um, however, I did do that and hopefully uh, you've enjoyed this video and got something out of it and please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.